And so Giannis faced some of the big names uh, and in the game and also who are on the bump tonight here. So we've got the career number. So hey, <laughs> Trevor Bauer, I mean, he can put, you can put some work in against the Trevor Bauer, a yeah. Tyler Glass now and Dylan Bundy. I'm sure you'd like to get uh, a few more cracks if you could. Look, the guy that when I see his name, Tyler Glass now, I, I think for me, that guy was a nightmare to face. So Trevor Bauer, Carlos Martinez, National League, that was the old yonder. I had some fun with that. But my goodness, I faced Tyler Glassstone at the end of my career, and it was not fun at all. All right, well, let's jump it into it. It was electric. All right, here we go. Look, and then I'm going to have a breakdown here. When, when it comes to, to Trevor Bauer and, and Glassstone, first off, the first day that I, I see this guy, he just got traded from Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Pirates. And I'm sitting here thinking, who is this surfer dude? About 6'7". Pretty good fastball. That's about all we knew from him. I faced him the first at bat. I'm just feeling him out. Second at bat, he threw me a cutter at 97 miles an hour. I had no idea what to do with that. Then after that, I started figuring him out. I said, you know, I'm going to start cheating to his cutter. Well, he started throwing me 90 mile an hour changeups, and I had no chance with that. Then it came to the point where I was just going up to bat, and I knew I was just going to get defeated. <laughs> now, with Bauer, it was a little different, right? Because we have a big history. I faced him for the first time with the Diamondbacks. Okay. Felt like I had some good numbers against him. I felt pretty good about him. He went to UCLA, so the Miami guy had to stand up for himself <laughs> and let him know the Miami guys were, were on board. And, and I, by, by all means, I had good at-bats against him. But for me, what you see there is I was always ready for the fastball. For me, it was all about timing his fastball and adjusting to everything else. His curveball at times wasn't really on point in those games. He was more of a fastball changeup type of guy, but for me, his fastball was the one that I needed to hunt at all times and make sure I did not miss it anytime I faced him. And Danny, I mean, when you used to take a look at Yonder and you know, getting Trevor Bauer here, how, how, what was the cat and mouse game like for you the more you faced a hitter? How much did you have to change up what you were doing? The thing you have to guard against as a pitcher when you're having success against a guy, you, you have to get out of that mode where I wonder if he knows what I'm doing, <laughs> and so I want to get away from that. And that that's the game that you play back and forth. And it was very difficult for me in the eighth and ninth inning because if I'm facing Yonder Alonso and I've had four or five at-bats where I have a pretty good idea – how I've gotten him out, and it was easy for me to get him out. Now it's starting to play with me. Is is he catching up to this game now when there's a man on second and two outs? Is he going to think about driving the ball to left field? My big thing was this, lefty on lefty. Hmm. I thought the safest pitch was down and away. If I could take Yonder Alonso and take him to make him be a singles hitter to left field, I've won the war because I've taken a big, strong guy like him and Mo Vaughn and Ken Griffey. Right. If I can turn them into line drive base hit hitters, I've won that battle. And I'm going to hopefully my defense will take over. But what would mess with you would be with a man on second and two outs if Yonder Alonso in some of those at-bats will shoot the ball to left field because a base hit to left field, that's the tying run. So right. it's the cat-mouse game that you have to understand. One, there's a guy, and, and it's just, the good hitters, they have different at-bats with nobody on base. David Justice was a nightmare for me. <laughs> but David Justice in a 9-1 to game would swing at the first pitch and roll over at the first base. Right. David Justice in the eighth inning in a tie game, I didn't want any part of that. That's <laughs> right. how, but right. guys change, and that's right. that's that's the cat and mouse game. And, and you need to know what type of hitter is who, like you were saying. If a guy is struggling hitting 200, he's at all costs trying to just get hits. If a guy is feeling sweet and saucy <laughs> and feeling really good at the play where he's seeing the ball like a beach ball, right. he, he's in scoring position right here. Right here, he's in scoring position. Right. And he knows it, and the whole team knows it. Now, with a guy like what you were saying, if it's a runner on second and I'm wanting to hit that ball the other way, that, that becomes a little bit of strat strategy. Right? It's strategy. It's all strategy. I might be doing that in the first inning. You might have a stressful situation in the first inning, and now my swing, my A swing that I want to pull off to try to drive you, it's not going to happen. It's got to come down to just me getting a good pitch to hit, hopefully elevated, because like you said, the best pitch in baseball is a fastball down and away. Mm. You can't do much with a fastball down and away. But now anything elevated, now you can go to work with that. Okay, okay. you had a lot okay. of success against Trevor Bauer. So you said you went up there hunting a fastball. Right. But now his game has kind of changed in the last couple of years, right? He has that hard spinning slider. He'll also throw that split finger changeup. He has a lot more weapons now than he had then. So how would you approach Trevor Bauer now? Still hunt the heater? That's exactly you know what? what I was going to ask. The first, two hit, the first two innings of the game will let me know how good Trevor Bauer is. And I started eliminating pitches. 
you know, if in the first inning he's throwing, let's just say, his fastball and curveball, and they're both on. Now, if I'm up in the second inning, I know his fastball and curveball are on. Now, if he throws me a changeup and a slider, and they're both on, it's the eighth no-hitter in, in the, on the year. Right. You can't cover all those <laughs> we're pitches. Done. Right. Guys, we're done. <laughs> right. Right? The glove, there's a huge glove on the field. It's the eighth no-hitter. Right. It's happening every day. If he's on with four pitches like that, throwing 97, 98, with that cutter that he developed, it's over. All right. It might give us something to look at there in the Bay Area coming up tonight. Great stuff.